Hello and welcome to St Albans Pottery. I'm Fiona Boy and today we're going to talk about magnificent coil pots. Coil pots have been made all over the world and one of the big advantages of coil pots is that you can build bigger, stronger vessels without lots of tools. Now making coil pots was certainly a very immersive way to spend a good few hours. I thoroughly enjoyed making this just going round, making coil after coil, widging them, squidging them, putting in all the different patterns. The single most important thing about coil pots is to make sure that those coils are stuck together properly. As it dries, you don't want a crack forming, either in the kiln or in the sunshine. This pot, a bit like this pot, the inside has been all coated together with clay and squished together smoothly, but the pattern still remains on the outside. Your options with decorations are endless. These little star shapes here are caused by this pen top going in. These more patterned lines, I actually rolled the sausages in vegetable bags. These guys here are just sausages rolled into a coil. These I rolled pebbles, stuck them in, and then I've got a little stamp of my daughter's that I just punched in. These textures here, were made by pasta. These little dots at the bottom were made by the end of my pointy stick. All the lines were cleared out after I had finished. Um, these little spots here are made by the end of this pen top, gone into those little bits there. Just go around the house, find all kinds of interesting things and get a variety of textures. One of the decisions you must make is whether or not you're going to use a former. This one, I just went freestyle. I made the base and got wiggling. This one, my son used a toilet roll. I did use a former. Yik. So to get started, we need our boil of clay, our paintbrush, our pointy stick, some water, and I've also collected a bunch of interesting shapes. Also going to start with a rolling pin, although you don't need one, you could always squash things flat with your fingers. So to start, I'm going to break off a small part of the base. I'm going to squish it and roll it into the right shape. Roll, I end up with quite a nice pancake. Now you don't want it too thin, you want your base to be nice and strong. So here you can see I've made a nice base. I can then get my pointy stick and I can go around the edges and get a nice base. Now we want to start making some sausages. The trick is to make quite a lot of sausages and probably about as thick as your little finger. The consistency of the clay is really important. The clay I was using was too wet. So I squidged together a whole lot of coils, which I let dry. And once I had a few to work with, I could then get working. So let's get rolling. The best way to make sausages is to roll them on your mat. Now it doesn't matter how thick or thin the coils are, just so long as they are even. We're gonna start with our usual hashtags. So we could do our cross, 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 and then we can do our hashtags the other way. Similarly, I'm going to do hashtags on my coil. Then I get my magic paintbrush, not very magic, just a paintbrush, and I put it in my water. Be careful when you're putting the water on that you just dab the water and you don't wash away all those nice lines that you've already made. Now the trick to actually pushing them on the coil is to go around nice and evenly and firmly in a circle. And you can keep moving it round as you're pushing it. On the outside, you're starting to get a nice pattern, and on the inside, you're going to make it nice and smooth. So I'm going to carry on up, and I'm going to now start the next line up. Now I like to do three rows before I start doing patterns. That gives me a nice firm base to start with. I'm also gonna make a few balls and stick them in. So I want to make several the same size. And then I can use my favorite tool and make little star patterns. A look, and I've now got a whole bunch of balls with star patterns, which I'm going to insert in between the coils. Again, I'm going to do my cross hatching. You want to make sure that you're cross hatching all the way around, even these little patterns. So here you see, I'm progressing with all my different patterns. Once you've got to a certain number of rows, you can then look at the inside and start smoothing that out. Or the back of your pointy stick and that you can smooth it inside very nicely and make it nice and strong. You might want to add more clay inside. 
And so you're actually smoothing them all into each other. You might also end up with one extra coil that you put in the cracks at the bottom. And you can go as tall and as high as you fancy. Um, you might want to start with a smaller base and go out. You might want to start with a big base and go in. You need to take care when you're removing your um, former from the piece of work. Uh, you need to make sure that it's dry enough that it'll hold its form and not too dry that it holds the former. You see, I've managed to twist this. This cardboard has been really good and I've managed to pull it out. And here we have a beautiful shape inside and it's now held its form. So for this one, I actually had to cut it down the side here and down the side here and open it out, a bit like open heart surgery, open it all out and then I had to firm up the inside with clay and then I put newspaper back in and then attached it very, very carefully together. I cross hatched and put water in and squidged it very, very carefully to get that done. I spent quite some time getting the neck properly smoothed and integrated back into its piece. The other thing to remember when you're using formers is that clay shrinks. Perhaps you want to use the former on the outside so the clay can shrink away from it. And don't forget to put your name on the bottom. Go ahead, have fun.